Hi everyone, this is Clint from Persuasive Evangelism. I'm at Lake Sacagawea on this hot summer day, well, September day, and I just walked under a tree and the leaves were already starting to fall off it, so fall is coming. Uh, today I'm gonna talk about Cold Case Christianity by J. Warner Wallace. This is actually one of the first apologetics, Christian apologetics books I read a couple years back. I actually just, and apologetics means uh, in defense of the, basically the truth. Um, I discovered him, I w watched uh, uh, the movie God is Not Dead, and then I watched God is Not Dead part two. I recommend those movies. Uh, part two, uh, J. Warner Wallace has a small role in it, and he plays himself in a court, and uh, they ask him a few questions about the evidence for Christ, so that's how I discovered him, and I looked him up and found this book, so I read it a couple years ago. Um, has a lot of good information. He, uh, I should, I'll read the back, because uh, he was an atheist. Uh, he was, uh, he, he worked with cold cases and tried to solve crimes, but uh, I'll read the back what it says. For the first 35 years of his life, J. Warner Wallace was a devout atheist. After all, how can you claim, believe a claim made about an event in the distance past for which there is little forensics evidence? Then Wallace realized something. Christianity was a lot like the cold cases he solved as a homicide detective. Homicide detective. Cold cases that turned out to have enough evidence, eyewitnesses, and records to solve. When Wallace applied his skills as an expert detective to the ass ass assertions of the New Testament, he came to a startling realization. The case for Christianity was as convincing as any case he'd ever worked on as a detective so he was an atheist he worked in LA as a cold case detective and he then he examined the evidence for Christ and he found it strong and became a Christian because of it so this book um, he kind of goes over that evidence and how he analyzes cases so he's very analytical logical but he writes it so it's easy to understand with a lot of illustrations in it um, so the first part of the book is just how he solves cold cases, how he looks at, sometimes he'll, he would review testament, testimonies or multiple testimonies, um, sometimes, you know, decades old. And he applied all these skills, all, all his abilities to the, um, to the gospels, kind of showing them as almost eyewitness accounts. And um, some of the stuff I liked in it is um, how he, he goes through and how he dates the Gospels, kind of going through the evidence of um, when the Gospels were written, you know, by the eyewit eyewitnesses. And he also talks about, uh, let's see. Then he talks about the timeline about, uh, so the first 300 years of Christianity, um, basically the um, Christianity was illegal uh, you know, by the Roman Empire, that Christians were persecuted. So the church leaders, you know, taught the scripture, but not till the 300s with Constantine when Christianity made legal that they could officially get together and uh, confirm what, you know, the books of the Bible of what they had been, you know, for generations, they had considered the books of the Bible um, that they considered scripture. So he kind of does like a chain of evidence um, showing through the different generations, how that knowledge was passed, which I thought was interesting, such as, you know, Jesus taught the disciples, let's say, he taught John, Apostle John, and then who were uh, John's disciples, and th throw on, so on through to the 300. So I thought that was fascinating. Um, he, he talks about uh, some, you know, like atheists and so on will point out this, and he, he'll, he'll do a rebuttal and so on. Um, he also talks about, which I liked, um, some of the gospel. The gospels have basically an unintentional support, basically undesigned coincidences. So, one author, you know, wrote what the, he witnessed in the gospel. Let's say the gospel of Matthew, and then uh, the gospel of John will write about the same ones. But they have different um, facts listed or um, descriptions, and um, just like when you give different testimonies, people will describe different things and. They, someone might mention what something maybe just offhand and then the other person will mention something else that explains that or vice versa so he he goes through that just bring, it brings authenticity to the different um, scriptures and he also talks about um, which I like uh, which I had never thought of but uh, just to give more 
credence to the scriptures uh the he ta he focuses on like the names like the names of the new testament um and you know they go through they look through the literature of that time to see the common names in in the palestine area um and th those same names are the popular names that are in the bible so bringing more um authenticity to it because you know the scriptures were wrote, written like 200 years later then after the events then you know the names change the popular names change also um locations corrupt corroboration of locations like it the new testament mentions you know all these villages and stuff um which through archaeology they find that oh that is correct during that time period you know the time of the events you know now if it was written 100 or 200 years ago or after the events it you know villages change they disappear or new ones and um they wouldn't have all that information so i thought that was interesting um he also talks about non-biblical eyewitnesses corroborate the gospels such as josephus uh, phallus tacitus tacitus was born in 56 a.d and died in 117 a.d so he was alive when the uh the um, apostles were preaching the gospel um, and he, he has a reference to early Christianity. He says, um, consequence, consequently, he, to get rid of the report, Nero fastened the guilt and inflicted the most acquisitive torture on a class hated for their abominations called Christians by the populace. Christus, from whom the name had its origin, suffered the extreme penalty during the reign of Tiberius at the hands of one of our procurators, Pontius Pilate, and a most most mis mischievous superstition thus checked for the moment again broke out not only in judea, judea the first source of the evil but even in rome where all things hideous and shameful from every part of the world find the center and become popular so basically you know he references um, pontius pilate um who acute who condemned jesus to death uh, uh, christ the christians and how you know christ christ was um, killed but and then they thought um, the movement the movement was checked for a moment but then it broke out and Christianity spread because Christ rose but um, he has several references here I love these all the non-biblical references that give evidence to to the events um, he also has a section on archaeology that corroborate um, like names and so on uh, locations uh here's one it says uh in romans in in rome there's a was a person named eratus in rome in 1623 paul wrote eratus the city treasurer greets you and then um they they have never found any evidence for that name for that person but then a piece of payment was discovered in corinth in 1929 confirming his existence uh and then there's tons of evidence like that um or how they correctly describe the government of the time or the locations and so on and uh, there's there's so much good information in here um and then i'll go over you know were they accurate what did they say and how well was it preserved and so on so there's a tons of good information in this book and it's easy reference book so i recommend this book cold case christianity by j warner wallace thanks everyone goodbye and god bless i'll give you another look at lake sacagawea take care everyone bye